So now I have the pleasure to invite uh, Professor Rotem uh, Karni uh, for a lecture on uh, inhibition of nonsense mediated messenger RNA decay. Again, to improve stop codon read through therapy, another way to treat people. So we are looking forward to hear you. Please. All right, thank you, and I want to thank uh, Miguel and the organizer for uh, inviting me uh, to talk today. Uh, and I'm going to tell you how we are trying to improve the therapy for uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy and other diseases where you have nonsense mutations uh, to improve the drugs that are um, working through the read-through mechanism. So, as you heard a little bit in the morning, Duchenne um, is a muscle degeneration disease. Um, um, we have around 350 uh, patients in Israel. Um, it's one to 3,500 uh, uh, male birth. Um, and it's an X-link uh, disease. Um, and as you, as you saw in the morning in the movie, uh, these kids, uh, usually the disease is detected when they are two to three years old. Uh, around the age of 10, they, start, they have to, to go to wheelchair because they, they cannot walk anymore. Um, and then around when they are teens or around their 20s, they cannot, uh, cannot breathe without, uh, without machines and eventually they, they die usually from heart failure because the muscle of the heart is uh, degenerated. So dystrophin, the, the gene where the mutation uh, caused the disease, is a very large gene. It's one of the larger genes that we have. Uh, and it encodes a protein that actually binds on one side the cell membrane and on the other side the cytoskeleton. So it's very, very important for the, for the muscle because it uh, contract uh, all the time and you need to keep the structure of the muscle. And when you, have, when you don't have this protein, there is nothing to hold the cell, uh, and eventually this, the muscles will start to die and degenerate. You can see that if, uh, if we stain uh, the muscle, you can see the dystrophin in the edges of the muscle fibers, and you can appreciate that in uh, Duchenne patients, you have no staining of the protein because it's not produced at all. It, it is not produced because a variety of mutations, uh, which I will show you in the next slides. Uh, but there is a very similar um, disease called Baker muscular dystrophy, which is caused by uh, deletions or mutation in the same gene. But in these mutations, or usually deletions, uh, the deletions delete a full exon or several exons in the middle of uh, dystrophy, and it keeps the reading frame. So the protein is produced, but it's shorter. And these patients have much milder uh, phenotype than uh, Duchenne. Uh, in Duchenne, we don't have the production of the protein at all, as you, as you could see. And here we have a shorter protein, but it's, uh, it's uh, somewhat functional. And the, the differences between the diseases are that uh, in Duchenne, you, have, um, you start to go to wheelchair, um, and the lifespan is about 30 years, while in Baker, People can live until their 50s or 60s. Um, and it's a much milder uh, disease. And then when people try to see if the shorter version of the protein is functional, they found that even if you delete big portions in the middle of dystrophin, the protein is still functional. And uh, mice that harbor this, uh, uh, if they don't have dystrophin but they have the shorter version, the muscles still, still function. Um, and from this uh, discovery and from this idea, people thought, okay, if we can make a shorter version of the protein, we can convert the, um, the Duchenne phenotype into Baker, and then we can improve a lot uh, the, the, the life of the patients. So the strategy is now that to treat 
that uh, are uh, in clinical trials to treat Duchenne. One of them is to induce skipping of the exon where you have the stop mutation, the nonsense mutation. So if you have a stop, stop codon mutation here, if we eliminate this exon, we, we still keep most of the protein and it will be like you saw in the cases of uh, Baker, um, we can improve the phenotype. So the idea is to use antisense oligos which competes on the splice site and you do skipping of this exon. This is not working very well, although it's, it's in, uh, it was uh, up to phase three because of all kinds of problems of uh, toxicity and delivery of the antisense oligos. Um, and the other strategy that is, is used now is read-through therapy. These are drugs that um, uh, actually cause the ribosome to read through the stop codon, so it inserts a different amino acid in step in, uh, instead of the stop codon, an arbitrary amino acid. And then you have the full protein with a different, one different amino acid, um, which is supposed to keep most of the protein intact. So for, for this is for the, the, the skipping, so you basically, if you are out of frame because of uh, deletions or because of nonsense mutation, you can induce skipping of this exon with the antisense oligos, and then you, you go back to frame. And as, as I told you, this, this is not, um, it was successful, but uh, wasn't showing enough improved uh, survival in humans. And the read-through therapy, the idea is like that. So you have, if you have the normal stop codon, the ribosome translates until the stop codon. If you have a premature one, you, you either have a truncated protein, but I will show you that actually you don't have truncated protein because this, um, this process causes degradation of the RNA. And if you have a molecule of, uh, that induces in read-through, then the ribosome can, puts here a different amino acid instead of the stop codon, and continue the translation until the normal stop codon. So the problem with this read-through uh, therapy is that when you have an additional stop codon, a premature stop codon, there is a, a full process which is called non transmitted decay that recognizes this uh, early stop codon, this premature stop codon, and mark this RNA for degradation. And actually, if you have such mutations, you don't have truncated protein because the, RN, the mRNA is already degraded before the protein, before it is translated. And this is through the process of non transmitted decay. So uh, in order to study this, we use uh, both skin fibroblasts and mice, as I will show you. So we take skin fibroblasts from the patients, and we can either study them as a fibroblast, but because dystrophin is expressed in muscles, we can either convert them to iPS cells and then differentiate them, differentiate them into muscle cells, or we can directly put, for example, myOD to induce differentiation into muscle cells, and then we can uh, um, we can do experiment with the drugs that I will show you um, in the next slides. So this is the structure of dystrophin. As you can appreciate the size of the protein, of the gene. There are 79 exons, and there are many different mutations. And we collected uh, from patients several types of mutations. We have uh, um, four stop codon um, mutants. And we have uh, patients with deletions of exon, which cause also stop codon because of uh, going out of frame. We also have uh, deletions and duplication and other that I'm not showing here. We also use a mouse model of uh, dystrophin, which is called MDX. And in, this, in these mice, there is a stop codon in exon 23. Uh, and very similar to the human stop codons, it causes the degradation of the uh, mRNA of dystrophin, and there is no protein, as you can see in this staining. There is only a few fibers in the muscle which are stained um, compared to healthy uh, mice. So our strategy, or what we are trying to do, is to combine drugs that will inhibit the degradation of the RNA, so the read-through drugs can work much, much better and have something to work with. Uh, they need the RNA to translate. Uh, so this is the normal case, and in case of uh, NMD, I told you that the RNA is marked for degradation, um, and we are preventing this degradation. You will see that I will show you results using cyclohexamide, which is a translational inhibitor, 
but because it inhibits very strongly the NMD, so we use it as a positive control. And of course, it's, we cannot uh, use it in the clinic because it will kill the cell. So the first thing that we, try, we wanted to see is if there is indeed degradation of the RNA of the different patients by non-transmitted decay. So you can see that if we have different uh, patients, and you can, you can appreciate that uh, there is much, if we block uh, the degradation by NMD, by cyclohexamide, we have much higher um, expression of the RNA, which is degraded if we don't add cyclohexamide. And this happened in all of the patients, and you can also see that the basal level of the dystrophin RNA is also different between the patients. So we believe that some of them really will, be, will really benefit from addition of the drugs that will prevent the degradation of the RNA. And here is the more quantitative uh, measurement by qPCR, and you can see that there is a huge uh, fold increase if we block the degradation by cyclohexamide uh, in almost in, basically in all of the patients. So how are we going to inhibit NMD? So we are using two different drugs. Both of them are approved for completely different uh, diseases. One of them is called Amlexanox. It's a drug that uh, is used for two different diseases. One is for uh, mouse ulcers, um, either as a paste or as a, or as a, um, uh, or as a toothpaste or, or um, even as a candy. And the other is tables that uh, is pr produced in Japan to treat anti, uh, as an anti-inflammation uh, drug. Uh, so these are approved for these types of uh, treatment, and, and Amlexanos can inhibit NMD, it was shown. The other drugs is a chemotherapy that is used for several blood cancers, 5-azacitidine, which recently, um, both of the drugs were shown to inhibit NMD. 5-azacitidine uh, was recently, two years ago, was shown to be a very strong NMD inhibitor. Uh, and we want to try to combine these drugs as a proof of concept if we can indeed um, increase the translation of uh, dystrophin. So first of all, um, we saw that indeed both of these drugs can enhance the level of dystrophin mRNA, uh, both amlexanox and 5-azacitidine. Uh, and we also... And this, this uh, compound, PTC, is, the, is a drug that is uh, now approved in Europe. It is not approved by the FDA because the results are not good enough, which is part of the problem of these read-through drugs. So PTC or Amlexanox is causing read-through of the mRNA. And we want to combine um, uh, Atalorin or PTC together with these drugs that inhibit NMD. You can see that also PTC by itself can inhibit somewhat NMD because it, it, it causes uh, read-through. So first of all, because uh, before we are um, converting these fibroblasts into muscle cells, we wanted to test on these fibroblasts from kids if we can see that these combinations work. And because we don't have expression of dystrophin in these cells, but we do have expression of some uh, common proteins, so some of them are uh, actually splicing factors, and many of these splicing factors have um, events of splicing in the 3' UTR that inserts a premature stop codon. So they, are, they, can, they autoregulate themselves by this, uh, and this causes basically um, NMD of these RNAs. But as you can appreciate, there is, it doesn't change the reading frame of the protein. So if we inhibit uh, NMD, and we do read-through, basically we will get the same protein from these genes. So we can actually see if the, the level of these proteins go up when we combine these two drugs. So this is what we, are, we try to do. First of all, looking on the RNA, you can see that cyclohexamide indeed, these transcripts which are going to undergo NMD, there is accumulation of them if you put cyclohexamide. And you can also see it... Um, uh, by real-time PCR, uh, and you can see that 5 azacitidine for example, works very, very well. And when we look, also, again, uh, and these are th four different patients with stop codon, and we look, when we look, two of these patients, these, these are cousins, you can see that there is increase of the RNA that's supposed to go to NMD. And when we look at the protein level, now you can see that if we combine both 5 azacitidine and 
um, the PTC drug, we get increased expression of the protein. So that means that uh, at least in these patients, and also in, in some others, we see it also in other patients, we have accumulation of the protein like we predicted. So if we combine uh, drugs that inhibit the degradation of the RNA plus the risk drug, we have more protein. Uh, and we are also trying this uh, in the mouse models. From the first experiment that we did, we just tried to calibrate the level of the, the doses of the drugs that we have to give the mice. Um, just to give you an example, this is the uh, 5 cytidine. So indeed, we see that we can see accumulation um, of the DMD mRNA in mice that were treated with the low doses of 5 cytidine. So it can inhibit NMD also in vivo. Um, and in the first, um, uh, and you can also see that we can see a little bit if we have also, um, if we put PTC or Omlexanox, we also see a little bit, a little bit more staining of the fibers. And maybe this result explained to you why the results are not that good in the clinic, because it's only a very mild increase in the protein level if you put uh, PTC alone. And Amlexanox also had some read-through activity as well, but very low. Uh, in the second experiment, which is bigger, and we didn't finish to analyze the results, we, had, uh, we treated the mice two, for two months, um, and I cannot show the results because we didn't finish the, the analysis. Just before I finish, I, I want to, uh, to show you that we also try a different direction. So recently, um, it was shown that um, RNA methylation um, uh, resides very, very close, at least in the uh, M6 adenine um, methyl methylation on uh, position 6 in adenine of the RNA, usually sits very close to the stop codon. So we thought that maybe it, it can affect the degradation of the RNA. Um, and um, we try to manipulate the enzymes that are um, responsible for these modifications. Um, and as control, we also inhibit components of the NMD pathway. So this, if we inhibit UPF1, we're supposed to inhibit NMD. That is known. Uh, and this is the inhibition of the enzyme that is demethylating the RNA. And as you can see from both an NMD target and from dystrophin, we can see that indeed inhibition, uh, inhibition of um, both NMD but also RNA methylation uh, cause accumulation uh, of NMD-prone transcript, meaning that maybe, indeed, RNA methylation is important for non-transmitted decay. And we also tried drugs that are supposed to inhibit this enzyme. Uh, and also here we see the drugs that inhibit uh, the enzyme that is doing the demethylation. We can see accumulation of the RNA that is supposed to be degraded. So these are new types of molecules that we might be able to use that inhibit non-sensitive decay. So in summary, what I showed is that we have our strategy to help the read-through drugs is to inhibit NMD, increase the level of the mutant RNA with the non mutation, and then the read-through drugs like atalorin will work much better to increase the full-length protein. Um, I want to um, acknowledge uh, mainly the Amar that did most of this work. Um, the foundation, uh, foundations in Israel uh, that contributed the help and money, Little Steps, Tzadim Ktanim, and the uh, Adi Foundation. And I will be happy to take questions if you have. Thank you. Is good. Uh, thank you very much. Um, so you have